Hey guys, wait, I think it's too dark. Let's try this. Jesus. All right, hi. I've got a week on theaters this week. So I'm gonna be in three different theaters, seeing all kinds of different operations. It's currently 10.30 p.m. I've got my alarm set for five right now, but that should be 5.30. Change that real quick. That would have been a disaster. All right, there we go, 5.30. I just did a podcast episode that was really, really fun. Went for a nice 10K run and I am pretty much exhausted. I'm gonna pass out and I will catch you guys tomorrow. Peace. Secretary Matt Hancock has called a cross-party meeting for MPs this morning to update them about the discovery. The Conservative... It's a strange feeling when you wake up and you look outside at all your surrounding buildings and like not a single window has their light on. So since we change into scrubs when we get to the hospital, I don't need to wear any formal clothes on my way in like formal pants, shoes, and a shirt, which is honestly great because it makes that commute into the hospital so much more comfortable. Oh my gosh, it's freezing. I thought we were starting to get warmer. Anyways, I also realized that I didn't do my intro because I was so tired this morning. So what is up guys, Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Nasser and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at King's College London. And the reason that I've woken up so early today is because I have a week of theaters. And usually the anesthetist starts prepping the patient at 7.30 in the morning. So I'm trying to get to the hospital for 7.30 in the morning so I can be present pre-op. This is also the time when the patient gets administered lots of different drugs. Intravenous access goes into the patient and those are things that I can help with, that I can do and practice, and so it's good to be there early. And I think the surgeons aim to start their surgical list at about 8.30 in the morning, and then depending on what I'm watching, which I actually don't know, it'll last for a couple of hours to all day. I, I actually have no idea what I'm gonna go see. All right, guys, I'll catch you in a bit. First and only person here. In fact, I'm so early. The place where I normally get scrubs from wasn't even open. I've recently started reading this book um, by a doctor called David Knott, and it's called War Doctor. So that's him. They went out of their way to make me food and to give me gifts and presents when things went well. It's about an English trained trauma surgeon who has spent a decent amount of time traveling to all kinds of war zones. The stories that he tells are just mind-boggling, incredibly inspiring, absolutely crazy. I mean, honestly, I don't remember the last time I was listening to a book and I felt this hooked and this attached, this drawn in. Anyways, just gonna get changed now, go to the theater where I know I'm supposed to be, and try and find the anesthetist that I'm attached to for the day. And then from there, it could go one of a hundred ways. All right. That's it for me. I'll see you guys in a bit. Peace. So I'm in the right place, but the doctor that I'm shadowing isn't gonna be here for another half an hour. So in the meantime, I'm going to get my blue scrubs, which is what I need for surgery, and these shoes for surgery. I think they're called clogs. To the person or persons who has been DMing me like every week for a year about my shoe size, there you go. Now that I'm changed for a second time, it's time to go back to theaters and awkwardly find my doctor. We are all done. Oh wow. We're all done with the first patient. You guys might remember this. If I can, yeah, you might remember that from my last vlog if you've seen it. That was really interesting. I actually got to hold the patient's airway open. So do the head, uh, head tilt chin lift in order to maintain the airway uh, as they were put onto the ventilator. I was also able to put in an eye gel, which is like an airway adjunct to keep the airway open. 
Wow, my beard is so itchy. Anyways, I'm just gonna quickly grab something to eat. I think there's two or three more patients on the list for today. So yeah, gonna eat something, head back to theaters and continue on. <sighs> All right, long day, but it's over. <sighs> hey guys, all done for the day. Um, it's about 4.35 now. And usually I would just beeline straight for the tube station, get home so I could move on with my day, start doing my to-do list, etc., etc. But I thought, you know what? The weather's really nice. I'm gonna grab a coffee, come watch the sunset over here, over the Houses of Parliament, and just soak in life a little bit, you know? Instead of just constantly running around and being in a rush. I discussed this on my podcast yesterday, and uh, it's something that I'm trying to work on to slow down a little bit smell the roses to be as cheesy as possible sort of taking life a little bit more slowly so today was quite interesting i was um, shadowing an anesthetist in theaters or in surgery and my job for the day was to maintain the patient's airway as they were being transitioned from spontaneous ventilation so the patient breathing for themselves to getting put on a ventilator and having the machine breathe and ventilate for them no no go ahead so anyways hopefully i've explained that at least half well why are birds always making noises in my vlogs? Hopefully I've explained that at least half well. I'm literally just gonna sit over here for a little bit, soak up the sun, enjoy this view and a bit of relaxation, and then head home to continue on with the day. mad beautiful when you get enough time to you know soak it in and enjoy it really appreciate these days with sun nice views all right had enough fun had enough time chilling time to head home hey there Whew. Finally home. Honestly, so tired. I did not sleep well last night at all. <sighs> if this car alarm goes off one more time. And yeah, if you're gonna be on placement in theaters or in surgery, don't go for a run the night before because your legs and your back are not gonna thank you for it. Anyways, finally home now, and I just wanted to say one thing, which is that, well, if you're already in medical school, then you probably know this, but if you're not, Basically, when you go to the hospital and when you're on placement, your day is filled with lots of nothing happening. And then at some point, something interesting will happen or you'll be able to take part in a procedure or you'll see something interesting or whatever. But so much of the time is spent kind of waiting around, doing sort of menial things that you've done before, blah, blah, blah. blah. And that's what makes uh, clinical placement so challenging because you kind of have to be there all the time in order to increase your chances of encountering those blips of excitement and interesting things and activities and learning opportunities and whatever. Anyways, that's it. I feel like I'm just tiredly rambling into the camera. So I'm gonna go undress, get comfortable, sit down on my computer and start working through my infinite to-do list on Notion. And I'll pick up the camera again, either later tonight, tomorrow, after tomorrow. All right, okay, bye, peace. You know when you get into bed and you set your alarm, and you just look at it and it's like painful. Ugh. Like, I know it's gonna be a good day. It's gonna be very useful, but uh, that 5.30 wake up is just brutal. Anyways, I'm sure you've had enough of this paranormal activity we make. I'll see you guys in the morning. The last two days on clinical placement in the emergency medicine and critical care block. It honestly feels like I started this block just yesterday. These eight weeks have absolutely flown by. Been in recess, the emergency department, ICU, a critical response team, anesthetics, theaters, and I'm probably forgetting something, but it's been really, really interesting. If not my favorite block, my second favorite block after neuro. And of course, last year that was cut short for me because of coronavirus. In classic London fashion, it is drizzling, and so I've got, got my hoodie on. There's something like peaceful and serene about being out this early, you know, before, well, I mean, there's no sun in London anyway, but before the sun rises, uh, before everybody starts moving and hustling and bustling in the city. But at the same time, I'm kind of just tired. <laughs> I just want to be in bed at this time. Like, I don't know how people wake up this early and go for a run, it boggles my mind. The thing is, like, I'm a big fan of waking up early and waking up at seven is like completely normal for me, but waking up at 6.55 is like way too early. <laughs> 
So I think once there's a six involved, and even worse, once there's a five involved in the time that I'm waking up, then I'm like, nah, this is too much. different hospital than the one I was out on Monday. This is fairly classic in uh, medical school clinical placements. You get sent to different hospitals, different wards with different doctors and different things to do on different days of the week. So you always need to be on top of your schedule. So I'm actually very close to where I went to medical school for my first three years of university next to this building here. It's been real foggy the last couple of days. Anyways, I'm gonna head into the hospital, change into scrubs, find somewhere to put my clothes, meet my anesthetist, blah, 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 blah. And I'll see you guys in a bit. Peace. All right, a very lovely nurse has showed me where everything is and where I need to be, which is fantastic. So I'm already dressed. And now time to go find my anesthetist. This is the face of a medical student who shows up to the theatres at 7.30 in the morning and is told that their consultant won't be here until after 8. Classic! At least I've got some coffee. Alright, all done for today. I've come to Oro Market in order to get some lunch. I've been walking around for a while and honestly I'm not sure what to get. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to circle around a little bit more. We saw two cases today. They were fairly interesting and they were orthopedic cases this time, so different than what I was seeing on Monday, but the same in the sense of what I was doing from an anesthetics point of view. But I feel like I got to the point where all of my learning was done for the day and my time might be better spent at home preparing for my upcoming OSCEs or written exams. I got some very, very good stuff, first of all. These very cheeky sugar donuts. And then for actual lunch, a pita wrap. Yum. So I've come to this really nice chill spot by the water so I can sit down and enjoy this food. And then I think I'm gonna head home. So heading home now. Honestly, I feel quite sleep deprived. So probably the first thing I'm gonna do when I get home is take a nap. All right, so I'm home, obviously. And this is the first time this has ever happened to me, but after being in theaters for the day, I'm like cold to the bone, I'm freezing. So I've jumped in the shower to warm up a little bit, and then I'm just gonna go take a nap. I'm so excited for continuing on with the rest of the day. And before I sleep, I thought I would talk you guys through my philosophy around naps. What do I feel like this entire vlog has just been me in bed? <laughs> Anyways, so when I nap, I set one of three timers on my phone, either a six minute timer, an 11 minute timer, or a 21 minute timer, depending on how sleepy I feel. The reason that I set them for such short periods of time is because I literally just need that little of falling asleep. As soon as I doze off, then even if I wake up one minute later, I'm completely rested and good to go for the rest of the day. Ugh, I'm just gonna get into bed, pass out. And I'll see you guys in a bit. Peace. All right, homies. Post nap, cool down sesh. Got myself the necessary coffee. And I think I'm just gonna go through a whole bunch of emails that I have. I had zero emails this morning, and now I have nine plus 716 plus 117 emails. So I'm gonna go through those while my brain wakes up, and then I'm gonna do one hour of past paper questions and one hour of OSCE practice. I'm gonna do that, and that's probably gonna be my day. So I'll catch you guys tomorrow for my final day. Anyways, gonna get settled into this, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace. end of the day now it's almost midnight it is 11 52 and i realized that i actually didn't tell you guys much about what happened today and what my experience was In classic fashion the consultant wasn't there when they told us that they were going to be there then eventually when they came they were honestly really nice and did spend a decent amount of time teaching me and showing me uh, how to use ultrasound guidance to find the different nerves in the brachial plexus up here in the axilla and then use um local anesthetic, so lidocaine with adrenaline and bupivacaine in order to do nerve blocks on those nerves. Identify the nerve, 
and then block it and then find the next nerve and then block it and then find the next nerve and block it. Anyways, it's getting late and I need to go to sleep, but I've learned my lesson from yesterday. I'm not gonna go in for 7.30 in the morning. Instead, I'm gonna go in for 8.30 and then hopefully by the time that I'm there, I'll be arriving at the same time as the surgeon uh, or as the anesthetist, sorry. But I bet you because tomorrow I'm deciding to go in a little bit later, that will be the day that the consultant is there very early and then makes a comment about me being late when I actually arrive. Who knows, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'll let you guys know. All right, see you tomorrow. Do you guys see this behind me? Sunshine. So I accidentally set my alarm for half an hour later than I wanted to. And so I've woken up and just completely rushed out of the house. I think from wake up to being out of the house, it was half an hour, which is like the fastest I could, I've ever done in my life. So anyways, rushing over to my final placement and I'm gonna be a bit late, but it do be like that sometimes. absolute rush this morning. I forgot my headphones, so I'm about to get my ears destroyed. The noise! I'm running a little bit late. I'm gonna go in and I'll catch you guys later. Bye. All right, we made it. New place, new changing rooms, new scrubs, new theaters, everything. Rate the fit. All right, seriously, gotta go. Talk to you guys later. Oh man. I really miss being on campus. So many good times here. Being in a scrub cap all day has split my hair very awkwardly down the middle, but it is what it is. Going for my lunch break now. I've been with a very kind consultant this morning. Very keen on teaching, very keen on getting me involved, which means I'm happy to be there. I'm finding it very useful. I'm learning a lot of things. And uh, yeah, all in all, everybody's winning. I'll tell you guys a bit more about it later, but I actually don't have long at all now. We have like half an hour to go get some food and come back. When I saw that wasabi was open, I immediately went for it. This used to be my go-to back when I used to come to campus all the time for lectures, dissections, tutorials, etc, etc. Anyways, gonna find somewhere to sit down and eat this food and catch up with you there. For everyone curious, this is what it looks like. Got the shard all the way up there. And then this is the quote unquote beach at King's. I'm just gonna call Alexia, see what she's up to, eat this food, and then head back to the theater. All right, we made it back, got some scrubs. I'm gonna get changed for round two. Something that they have here, which I haven't seen very often, is really nice. It's just hooks, so we can hang up our stuff when we come into theater. I think we saw five patients since the morning. I mean, work-life balance of an anesthetist is excellent. So it's currently 2.45, we're all done for the day, and we've seen all the patients on the list for today's day surgery. Today in the theater, I was on the breast list, and so we saw five incisions of a lump in the breast, all one after another, with almost no time wasted in between. As soon as one patient was finished, we took them to recovery, and then by the time we were back in the anesthetics room, the patient was waiting, ready to come in. Today was the first time that I did the two-handed technique, one hand uh, tilting the head back of the patient, placing the mask on, and then the other hand bagging them and ventilating them. It's a really good experience, honestly, and it always feels amazing when you feel like you are helpful in some way, shape, or form, where you're doing something with your hands, something procedural. Oh, all right, I am so happy to be home. And that's it, that's the end of my clinical placement for emergency medicine and critical care. We've got one more week of just lectures, and if I'm honest, I'm gonna spend most of that time preparing for OSCEs, our Objective Structured Clinical Exams, so the practical exams that we have in medical school. And all right, guys, that is it. That brings us to the third day of my three days in theater. I've had a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. And if you did, don't forget to leave a like on it and also subscribe to my channel to see more content from me in the future. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace. Blooper. When I re-wake up from my fake sleep to turn off the camera. Bye-bye. <laughs>